Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today's lesson will be about triangles, if you haven't guessed that already. So the triangle can either be the most annoying thing you've ever heard or the most beautiful thing you ever heard, depending on the instrument and who's playing it. So today we'll go over a variety of different triangles from several manufacturers, also the clips used to hold them, how to play them, uh, and several triangle machines. So let's just talk about the basic orchestral triangle first. This is a good all-round triangle. This is a Grover hand-hammered triangle. And I have several of these hand-hammered uh, triangles made by Sabian, Grover. Uh, these are really, really nice instruments. Black Swamp also makes some of these. So we'll show you just the playing position. And that's this. You normally want to hold it up so you can see the conductor through it. Also, it looks better that way. And when you strike it, you're going to strike it on the bottom edge, normally, to your right. So like this. Now, if you're lefty, you turn the triangle around and have the open end facing the other way. So you'd be playing with your left hand. That's totally fine. And I've played with lots of lefties before. The only problem is when you go to play your triangle and they borrow it, it's backwards. So make sure they put it back the right way. So when you're holding it up like this, you can get several kinds of sounds out of it. Depending on where you uh, play on the triangle. Now, certain triangles you can get a whole bunch of different sounds out of, and other ones only a few. So we'll talk about that as well. Now, this is a triangle clip. And this clip, as you see here, has a line that holds the triangle on there. And this is a wood clip. I think this one's, yes it is, it's made by Grover. has a spring. And this clip uh, will go onto a music stand. But I want to say right now, you don't want to put your triangle on a music stand. Because if you do, it'll hum. Most music stands, except for the plastic ones, will have a metal hum to them. So the better thing to do is suspend that triangle uh, on a suspended cymbal stand and put a piece of wood on there and then clamp it down. Maybe with a stronger clamp like this. That's an LP clamp. Woodworkers clamps uh, will also work. They're just a little big. Okay, and we'll talk about those metal clamps in a minute. So this clamp has a spring and it opens up like that. This is wood. This is a Grover. This is one that I made myself. Okay, it's got obviously no name on it because I made it. Uh, just I copied it. It's easy to make. You just need a hinge, a spring. That's it. I'm not sure how much these cost, but it's probably way overpriced. So you might want to make your own. All right. And they do wear out over time, and then you can just make another one or buy another one. So you always want to have a safety string there, all right, just in case that breaks. You don't want your triangle falling to the floor in a nice soft spot of the piece. So you definitely need a safety. Okay, so try to do that. Now, as far as beaters go, I like these beaters. Uh, they're called Stessel triangle beaters. And I put a little bit of uh, some surgical tubing on there. So you can see that. You can get that at Lowe's or Home Depot. This is uh, something I got from my friend. And we were putting these on our triangles. It just gives you a little more uh, of a handle to play on. So if your hand's sweaty or you're a little nervous, you got something more to gri uh, grip onto. Some of these Stessel beaters are so thin, they're almost like acupuncture needles. You see that one there. And these come in several sizes. Stessel was a company, but now many, many companies will make these things, okay? Including uh, Pearl makes them and Grover and uh, Black Swamp as well. So this is a brass version of it here. That's very nice as well. So you need several beaters, several types of beaters for your triangle just to see what sounds best, okay? If you listen to this triangle, this is a Sabian hand hammered. That's with a brass beater, and this is with the regular Stessel steel beater. So you see there, the brass beater is a little louder, okay? And, but it does have a little more contact noise. Now, if we take a triangle like this, this is one of my favorite triangles. This is an old sonar. Uh, they don't make these anymore, but if you can find one, they're really great for playing Mahler, anything big. They're beautiful. It's 
It's a very complex sound. If you hear that with the brass beater, it sounds like this. So this is a gorgeous triangle, and you see how large it is, all right? No two triangles are going to sound the same, even if they're the same brand and the same size. That's unfortunate. It's just the way it is. Uh, the closest you'll get are these Grovers. I think this is their symphonic model, and I have two of the exact same ones. Let's see if they're the same. We'll use this brass beater. Let's try the other one. Right? Now you see on this, the brass beater is very metallic sounding. So you'd want to go with the Stessel beater. A little less contact noise. So you'll see these triangles are exactly the same. Pretty much. Okay? And these are Grovers. Now, the only other triangle that's going to be very similar from instrument to instrument uh, is this Allen Abel triangle. There's a couple sizes of these, all right? This is a really old one that I got from my teacher uh, many, many years ago, all right? So the new ones are much more shiny. And this was supposedly a prototype that Allen Abel gave him. And it's much darker than the normal Allen Abel's, but it's a nice triangle. So this is one of those instruments that sounds very different if you play it on the side up here than if you play it down below. Now you can play your rolls on the bottom corner, the right corner, or the left corner if you're playing lefty, so like this. Now that's done with the wrist, not the arm. You don't want to shake your arm like that. And it takes a lot of practice. It's not like playing with a drumstick. So it's a separate kind of technique. You can also do it up top here. Which for me has always been a little more difficult. I prefer, prefer to play it on the bottom here. All right, you never want to do this. The old dinner bell thing, please don't do that, okay? So that's how you play a roll on these. Now you can use lots of different kinds of beaters. If you have to play really soft, you can use one of these. The danger is that you'll get a little more contact noise and not enough triangle sound. So you gotta split the difference. A lot of times you have to play very, very softly. And if you have to do that, you can uh, mount the triangle and play with two beaters. So I'll show you that. So you'd have a mounted triangle like this and then you'd play with just two beaters up at the top. So that could be really beautiful and effective in, in the right spot. Now, as I said before, what you want to do when you're playing is offset the beater so you're not going straight on, but you're going a little bit at an angle. And it's best if you use the tip of the beater. You get more harmonics out of the instrument. Verse, if you go up farther, it sounds like this. And if you go uh, down farther. Now, this, is, this triangle doesn't have a lot of harmonics, but one that does is this sonar that I just showed you. So listen to the difference. This is straight on. Actually, this one has a hole in it, so we'll... Do it like that. So straight on sounds like this. Whereas if you go at an angle, it sounds like this. So a lot more overtones. I hope that's clear on the recording. So let's talk a little more about some beaters and some clips. So there's several kinds of beaters you can use to play the triangle. The ones you want to avoid are things that look like this. So these are kind of little uh, kid triangles that come with toys. Several of these kinds of things, okay? So you don't want to use anything like that. Um, 
you want to try to use something with a thinner shaft and a larger top portion for balance and weight. All right. And like I said before, these come in either a brass or steel. So uh, Grover makes some brass stencils that are not as rounded as these pearls, as you see there. They're very, very similar. So, you know, you'll have to be the judge of what you like better. It's more of how it feels in your hand rather than what it sounds like. These brass beaters, the heavy brass, is going to be pretty similar uh, throughout the different beaters that use that material, okay? Then we have, of course, all the Stessel sizes. Now, I call it Stessel, like I said before, because it's the company that designed them, but that's the... Uh, sort of way they invented these beaters with a thin rod and then a piece of plastic and the metal is sitting on that plastic to insulate it. So to me the originals were great. I've had some friends who've made these over the years. This is one such beater and they're fine too. So those are good. And they come anywhere from really small like that like I showed you to to very very large like that. Okay. There's also these teardrop beaters. These are available uh, from several manufacturers. I really like these because what you can do is play from soft to loud easily. So, because of the shape of them from thin to large there. All right, so the same thing with the rolls. All right, so you hear that crescendo is easier. All you have to do is move that in uh, to the triangle, okay? Then we have these kind of Perdell beaters, which I advise against. It's kind of heavy steel rod, just with a little bit of rubber there. They're not terrible by any means. That might be a good choice for your band, your band room, uh, if you're a teacher. They're not very expensive, so if you lose one or or whatever happens to it, it's not the end of the world, okay? So, but I do not necessarily use those too much. Okay, finally, we have some Grover beaters. These are kind of new, I like these. This is sort of a rubber shaft with uh, a softer, it's almost uh, aluminum, but a softer steel on top. The only bad thing about these is they do vibrate a little in my hand when I'm playing. But they do feel very secure because they're thick. So you're not dealing with a thin rod. So you might want to try those. I like them for certain things. All right. And they come in several sizes, just like uh, the Stessel beaters. So these are great and they are made by Grover. Now, um, finally, we have these other Grover beaters that were the mainstay for several years. So these are these colored beaters. I'm sure you, you've all seen these. have a piece of plastic here. And they feel pretty secure, but they don't sound great. So, And that's versus a good brass beater. So there's a little bit of difference, and also the feel isn't great because they're just a little bit insecure feeling. But they're going to be cheaper. So the most expensive option are going to be these brass Stessel type, and as well as the regular Stessel type of beater. And then you, you move into those Grover ones with the rubber uh, on the bottom of them, like these. Okay, so... The best thing about these, like I said, I, I, I would tell you is just to try try set. All right, now a few uh, more things about some clips. We talked before about that clip that um, LP makes. It's metal. This is good for clamp, clamping your triangle on a piece of plywood if you're doing it on a stand. It's a cheap way to do it. These are very strong, much stronger than the wood clamps. If you use the wood clamps in that 
uh, in that apparatus, it's liable to fall off on you. So I recommend these. The only thing you have to do is you need to drill another hole here. Uh, they come with one hole, which actually makes no sense to me. Okay, it's very insecure. So all you got to do there is just drill another hole and put that holder material, okay, kind of a wire tie there. And there you go. It's very strong. It's not comfortable to do it like this at all. So this is more for clamping the triangle like that, see? So it's, it's really not a good triangle holder, except if, you're, if you need a lot of clamping power. It's like a woodworker's clamp, all right? So then we also have some other ones. This one, I believe, is made by Freer. This is metal or aluminum. It's, um, it's okay. It's pretty good. You know, it just, again, it doesn't feel great, but it's not bad. I've used it. For some reason, I'm really used to these wooden clamps. Uh, I've been using them forever. But this is the next best thing, I think. Uh, it's a, again, I think it's made by Freer, say, metal triangle clip. And then finally, here's a plastic cheap clip made by Grover. This one I do not recommend. It's really hard to hold. It feels flimsy. It's cheap, though. So if you got to go cheap, then you can try that. But it's not the greatest thing. Now, let's talk about how to articulate rhythms. This is a, a Grover hand hammered. It's uh, number 10095. If you're interested in getting one like it, these are very nice triangles. And it's very heavy, but it's good for practicing these kinds of rhythms. So normally what I do when I have to play articulate rhythms is I, I hold the triangle. I try to hold it all the time. I try not to put it on a stand or anything else because if you do it's not visible and it's good for the audience and the conductor to see the triangle so what you do is you play inside the instrument with an up and down motion of your wrist now if you have to play other rhythms you can do it like this so you see there I'm actually moving in a triangular motion to play those rhythms Sometimes you can practice by just holding it. All right, it's extremely difficult. You got to practice a lot to get this. So, uh, but I would definitely recommend doing that as much as possible. Don't just stick it on some kind of holder and play with two beaters. Uh, try to do everything with one beater. All right, it just looks better and it'll also sound better. Now, sometimes you're in a situation where you have to play a triangle with one hand and something else with another hand, or you have to do a quick switch and you can't pick up the triangle and all that. So these devices right here uh, are fantastic. These are called Miller machines. They've been out for a long time. And what it is, is just you put the triangle on it like that, and you can hit it with a stick, okay? Now, unfortunately, it does have a little bit of a sound when you hit this um, thing here. You can try to use a mallet to lessen that, but it's still going to be there. But you can do rolls. Uh, I'll show you. I have a couple mounted here. So, uh, actually, let me put this... Um, uh, a Grover back up there. Okay, so you can do a roll like this. I have this little Perdell here. So you see there's a bit of rattling and all that. You really got to experiment. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on this stand, so I'm getting some rattling from that. But uh, for doing Broadway shows and some contemporary music that you have to do with orchestras, and even in the studio, it's a lifesaver. So I definitely recommend having one of uh, these. And we'll do a finger cymbal video probably today, later on. And there's a, they also make a finger cymbal machine, which is really cool. Okay? Now, these mounting things you see here, I built my little triangle tree here. Uh, these are made by Grover, so you can mount two triangles on there, or you could just make your own with a piece of angle iron. 
Uh, I got two of them here. I have two of these triangle machines, and I also have this suspended uh, thing here that's made by Tom Freer, and it has some clips. Again, if you wanted to, you could make your own, go to Lowe's, get some angle iron, but this is nice. You can put finger symbols on it, uh, crotales, all kinds of things. So those are things that just make your life easier when you're doing big setups. Now, uh, there's this other machine you probably heard in my little demo. This is a pearl triangle machine. So that's, um, that's pretty neat too. It was uh, kind of in competition with these Miller machines. It's fine. It's a little more, um, well, let's just say it's clumsy a little bit. So sometimes you can't get it even. And those things keep going where the Miller machine is. Or you can go. All right, again, you're still getting that residual noise. but So these are okay, these pearls. They're just a little more clumsy. Uh, I've used it with a Kunga setup with, from, with my hands. But like I said, I think the Miller machines are a bit better. So you might want to go with that. All right, so let's just talk about what to look for in a triangle. And uh, obviously, I have too many triangles, just like I have too many of everything. But uh, I love to have a choice of sound. So... The main manufacturers, Sabian, Grover, Black Swamp, Purdell, Allen Abel, and many others. There's a lot of boutique triangle manufacturers out there that will charge you a couple hundred dollars for a triangle. That does not mean it's better, but it might be. It might sound really cool. There's even triangles that aren't, that don't look like triangles. They're, they're shaped really different. They're very, very cool looking. But again, they're going to cost you. So you don't have to spend that much money on one to get a good sound. I would recommend, though, having a large triangle like this Sabian or like this Grover. These are very good. I have two, two of these, okay? Uh, they're a little different in pitch. I'll show you quickly. That's one. So close, close, but this one's a little more open. I hope you can hear that on the recording. It has some more overtones, but they're very close. So most of these triangles are going to sound similar. Now, the Sabian triangles, the large triangles especially, they're going to sound a little different. They're hand-hammered, supposedly. I don't know, but they say they are. And here's a Sabian, very thin. We can play that with a lighter beater. Okay, so they're much darker. Here's the biggest one they make, I think. So that's more of a color. It's not very useful. Obviously, it's too low in an orchestra setting. But if you want an interesting color, you can go with that. So for these... The bigger triangles, the moral of the story is, use a thicker uh, steel, all right? A little bit thicker. This is very light. The only uh, uh, thing, that, this sonar is pretty heavy, but it's steel. It's not brass or copper. So if you're going to buy a big triangle, I would buy it a little bit thicker, okay? Not too thin. So the pitch is settled, and it's not all over the place. In other words, it's not too spread out, like this Grover. All right. Now, another choice is this Grover Symphonic model that's a little more pure. So those are very nice. Both of these are really nice triangles. There's a Black Swamp. Um, it's at the hall, I think, and or at the college, but I can't get anywhere now. I'm trapped inside so I wasn't able to have those others for you here today we'll see if we can show those to you at a later date all right so for more color choose like a brass or copper instrument now here's another Grover triangle that's copper that's a good cheap all-round triangle I think these are only about 30 bucks okay and these are fine 
There's a couple different sizes. Here's the other one. Okay, so those are good all around um, non-steel triangles. Now for steel triangles, I would say that um, that Allen Abel is a, is a good bet. You can't go wrong with it. Uh, it's very pure. It's great for shows. Doesn't have a lot of overtones, but it's a good triangle. And again, they make a smaller one than this. All right. Good. Now, the smaller or medium triangles, so we'll go on small side now. So this is another one like the Abel. This is the Grover version. And you see that's brass. Okay, so that's going to have a little more overtones. So for a medium triangle, it's you can go with either brass or steel. I would say that would be fine. And again, the larger ones, uh, I would say go with the steel for the really big ones. Now for the small ones, and these are used quite often, uh, a really nice one is this black swamp, small triangle. It's harder to roll on because you don't have the real estate you do in a larger instrument. But uh, these are great for kind of muffling kinds of things, okay? Uh, and here's what uh, a brass small one sounds like. This is a Sabian. It's very nice, but a lot darker, you see? So the steel triangles are going to have a more focused sound, and they're going to be a little higher pitched in, in general. All right, so, so that's what you want to look for. So you'll need a, a large triangle, a medium triangle, and a small triangle. So the small triangles, you can either go with steel, I would, or you can go with one of these uh, hand-hammered ones. All right, I don't think that's an, a good all-round small triangle, but you, can, you could uh, do whatever you want. And then for a medium triangle, I would go with an Allen Abel or one of these Grovers, or you can go with a Sabian. The medium Sabians are not bad. Here's one of those. Again, darker because it's made of brass. It's hammered, all right? Or whatever alloy with brass in it. So that does it for triangles. Uh, we'll do a little video on finger symbols, but hopefully... Um, this answers some of your questions. And really quick, there may be some questions on how to hold it. Uh, I think most of you know how to hold it, but if you have any questions, here's how you do it. You put your thumb under it and two fingers on top. I tell my really young students when I do clinics, it's like buck teeth there, okay? And then you open and close it like that with your fingers. So you can get it onto that stand or not. So always try to suspend your triangles but not on a music stand if you have to play them with two mallets. You can use uh, this triangle machine or just get a little piece of wood and put it on a stand and play it like that. Don't put it on a music stand. Uh, have a great day. Thanks so much.